Lion's Hope. You kill? You're a killer? Shh, just try to calm down. You afraid I'll see you as you really are? As you've always been? Is that it? Well, you're too late. And on the edge of night. I asked you where you got that key from. Did that come from the Whitney house the other night? Are you hiding something that once was in the possession of your imposter no. husband? No, it was given to me. Ryan's Hope, The Edge of Night, weekdays. Today. Filene's Basement of Boston. The legend, the store, the adventure. Now open. The People's Court, today at 4.30. Neck brace? What's the reason for that? Let's see, how long do you think it'll be? Yeah, I suppose it could be worse, Miles. Tell him I'll try to stop by and see him tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Take that look off your face. Your buddy's gonna be all right. What's this about a neck brace? I thought the bullet went through the fleshy part. It did, but it badly bruises vocal cords. Miles thought a neck brace with restrict movement helped the healing process. Oh, I see. He's very lucky. He's very lucky. First of all, it's a small caliber bullet. Didn't make a direct hit. It ricocheted off the wall first. The big problem is he's not going to be able to talk for a couple of weeks. But I suppose we just won't have to listen to his dumb jokes for a while. Let's bring the tape to the answering machine. Yeah, got it right here. you to know that your pal, Damien Tyler, may be in trouble, and I'm telling you, you better do something about it fast. That's it. You know who I thought of first, naturally. Poppy Johnson. Yeah, disguising her voice or her boss, Eddie Lorem, I wouldn't blame her for the warning. When I asked her about it, though, she denied it. Oh, what else could she do? Chief? Loomis? It's customary to knock. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I, uh, just got the good word for you. Well, I got a good word for you, too, Loomis. Like, where the hell were you when Damien got hit, man? Hey, Stoner! Calm down. Hey, it wasn't my fault that he got hit. I told you, that shot came out of nowhere. Yeah, well, that call about the sniper came out of nowhere, too. How come you ended up with it, and who the hell told you to go over to Montrose? That call came from Tyler's private phone. Now, that's all I know. It didn't come off the switchboard? It's no. Private phone. Chief, it even sounds like I set up an our pal here. Let him right into it. Well, what else was I supposed to do, huh? Chief, why don't you let me check this out? Let me go see No, you. you're not checking out anything. You're on vacation. Chief, that was before Damien got shot. All right, all right, I suppose vacations just make you fat and lazy. You're back on the duty. Very nice, very nice. You got all the spelling right, all the commas in the right place, no stains from your meatball sandwich. Come on, it took me almost an hour. All those artists with the funny names. Eddie, I just came from the hospital. He's had a surgery. Who is? You're a lover boy. You know your lover boy, Damien Tyler? Some very nasty guy shot him. Here's the bad news. He's gonna be okay. Thank God. Well, you like that, huh? That makes you happy, huh? There, throw it again. Go ahead. Edge of Night is brought to you by Mountain Grown Folgers, Mountain Grown Coffee, the richest kind, and by Head and Shoulders, available in regular and conditioning formulas. If only you could hear what people think. Hey, sure like to be her pen pal. Nice. Must be the new guy in 3A. Too bad he's scratching his head. Could be dandruff. Maybe I can catch her apartment number. <laughs> I've never seen so much junk mail. <laughs> You may not think you have dandruff, but that little itch could be showing that you do. When you use Head & Shoulders shampoo, Head & Shoulders handles that little itch. So all that shows is hair that's soft and shiny clean. Now that's an improvement. 3A? Oh, 3B. Try Head & Shoulders shampoo and show off your hair, not the itch of dandruff, in regular and conditioning formulas. Hey, Ed, what'd you use an automatic coffee maker? Folgers Flaked Coffee. Great. What do you use in the automatic coffee maker? Folgers Flaked Coffee. Delicious. Mrs. Olson, what did you use? 
Oh, Folgers Flakes Coffee. Nothing's better in these coffee makers. Where is that? Folgers is mountain grown, the richest kind of coffee. It's a coffee recommended by Mr. Coffee, the best-selling coffee maker. And it's flaked? Flaked to release more rich flavor, so you use less. If you normally use five measures, you only need four of Folgers Flaked Coffee. Delicious! Mountain grown <laughs> Folgers. That's how good coffee makers make great coffee. So that's how Ted Loomis handles things for me, huh? That's two misses in a row. And he ain't gonna get a third shot, unless he's dumber than we think. Yeah, but I need He'll figure it out. What is this? Hey, what are you doing here? What do you want here, huh? <laughs> that's funny, you I don't remember. Bulma. Joe Bulma. Yeah, yeah. right. All right, what is this, a raid? What are you looking for, machine guns, tanks? I hope you got a search warrant in that baggy jacket of yours. I just I came over here to talk to you, Eddie. I mean, you don't mind that, do you? No, no, hey, that's fine. Uh, this is off the record, right? I mean, after all, you, uh, you're still on vacation, ain't you? <laughs> you know, it's amazing the way you guys always seem to know what's going on at headquarters, but this time you're wrong. I'm not on vacation. It's Damien that's taking the rest. Oh, gee, uh, you know, I heard about that. That's really, that really was a tough break. In fact, I was just saying to Poppy, you know, we were sending flowers over to the hospital. Did you call the flowers, Jeff? Yeah, I was when you walked in. Uh, how's he doing? He's okay. I'll tell him you asked. Don't bother. Uh, anyway, I got a letter to type. All right, Stoner, come on. What do you want? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me guess. You come over here to ask me whether or not I put a hole in your partner. Is that the story the now? The story is, Eddie, that that sniper report came in on Damien's private line, like, direct, you know? Maybe uh, it was from somebody he knew. Funny, that's exactly what I was thinking. Somebody who thought maybe a deserted alley might be a good place to take a few pot shots at him. Hey, didn't I tell you, Joe? The first door they were gonna knock on was mine. Well, let me tell you something, Detective Stoner. I've been in this gallery all day long, and I got 28 customers out there ready to test. Come on, Eddie, I didn't think you were dumb enough to actually pull the trigger yourself. Hey, you don't believe me? Go ahead, search the joint. You wanna check out the employees? You wanna look in the desk? Do what you gotta do. Excuse me, I got a long distance call coming. This is, uh... Picasso himself. He's dead. I tell you, it was long distance, eh? <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Yeah, sweet tooth. All right, hold on just one second. Uh, Detective, say, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, be careful, don't let the door, you know. Loomis, you are a second rate bum. Listen, Eddie, it was just a bad break, that's all. Tyler moved uh, just before I pulled the trigger. The bullet hit the wall before it hit him. Hey, you muffled his job twice in a row. The next time around, you're gonna have the FBI on my case. Look, do me a favor, all right? Just forget about Tyler. I can't take any more heat, you understand? What do you want me to do? I want you to do something easy, something simple. How about, uh, how about keeping an eye on Jody Travis, okay? You think you can handle that? You mental midget, you? He does know about the tricentennial. I knew he would. Uh, what are you doing? No sugar. His father is president of the country. Of course he knows about it. Oh, no, I mean he knows about the medieval pageant that they're holding in Graham County. Oh, you mean that big wingding Pietro told you? Yeah. About? See, there's going to be a celebration both here and Eden. A in fact, the ambassador's been trying to get Chad to go home for it, but he just refuses. What about the thing here? Oh, well, he'll be going to that, of course. It's being held at Raleigh Castle. Is that named after Sir Walter? No, this is named after uh, John Riley. He's a multimillionaire, and he brought the castle over from Eden stone by stone. This is the same place where the Bonaventure family lived many, many years ago. Oh, and where Marie died, defending her country like Joan of Arc. Gavin, please don't make fun of this. Okay, go ahead. Tell me about the pageant. How much admission are they going to charge? Do you want me to send away for a couple of tickets? No, because it's not open to the public. It's by invitation only. Royal decree. Well, you can fix that. You know the Prince Regent. There are going to be a lot of important people at this celebration uh, from Eden and from the States. There'll be parades, costumes, um, jousting, things like that. In fact, they're going to televise us by satellite all the way to Eden. Now, wait a minute. You're thinking of going to this thing, aren't you? Well, I, I thought it might be interesting. But you know what's going to happen if you go there, Jody. You're just begging for more trouble. 
You're going to do exactly what those crazy fanatics wanted you to do. You're going to show yourself as a savior of that country, the new Marie Bonaventure. Gavin, don't be silly. I'm not going to do anything like that at all. Well, you're darned right you're not going to do anything like that, because you're not going. <laughs> what? I know you're going to be really sore at me for saying this, but I'm not letting you go to that pageant any more than I would let you go to Eden. You won't let me go? You won't? Maybe you don't think it's any of my business. You're you absolutely you right. You have no say at all about what I do or don't do. Jody, there's a phone call for you. Thank you. Excuse me. Hey, what was all that about? You two kids have another fight? Sorry. I guess we should do that kind of thing in private. Well, maybe I could set up a ring in the middle of the place, hmm? Charge a little admission. Yeah, maybe you could. Listen, Galvin. It's none of my business, of course, but uh, why don't you go a little easy on Jody? I get the feeling she's being torn in a couple of different directions right now. That happens when you grow up. It even happens afterward. Yeah, I know. Well, just give her all the leash you can. Or better still, no leash at all. She'll pick the right direction, you'll see. The advice is free. The food isn't. Excuse me, I have to go somewhere. Hey, wait a minute. Sorry, I don't have time. No leash, huh? Go out in this weather and not use a Dorn? That could be very tacky. I like a Dorn for what it doesn't do. It doesn't feel tacky. Adorn has an exclusive moisture-resistant formula that holds style in while keeping moisture out, so you get long-lasting hold without that sticky feeling. I'll tell you why I like Adorn. I hate tacky. Long-lasting Adorn. There's nothing tacky about it. Mustard lovers love French's, the one and only sunshine mustard. Just put him back on the duty roster. He's on assignment now, and he'll show up sometime in the morning. For crying out loud, what the hell is this? No, not you, Anderson. I'll talk to you tomorrow. What are you doing? Why are you doing it here? <sighs> Darling, I came here to say hello. What's so wrong with that? What's the matter with having yourself announced? <laughs> Because Chief, your secretary left for the evening, which is exactly what you should do. And if you're lucky, I will give you the privilege of taking me out for a drink. Do I have the privilege of saying no thank you? No, you do not, especially since you walked out on me last no, night. No, I did not walk out on you last night. I was called away. Oh, yeah? Well, you have no idea how much trouble you got me into. Did you hear what happened? Well, I know you didn't get home until very late in the morning. Oh, yeah? Well, look, why don't you just put on your coat and we'll go someplace real cool Raven, and I said <laughs> no. I know more than I want to know. I know that you didn't get an invitation to that party. I know that you just used me to get there. I did not, Derek. I wanted to be with you. Oh, the hell you did. You wanted Skylar Whitney to see us together. You wanted him to think you had another man on the string, to see that you were getting back into the swing of things. That's not true. I don't know why you're bothering to try to make him jealous. I don't see what good it's going to do you. Derek, I swear to you, I am not interested in that miserable, horrible man in the least. You know what he did to me. You know how rude he was to me. I know you a lot better than I know him, and I know your mind works in a very <laughs> circuitous fashion, and you have somehow gotten it into your head that flaunting another man is going to punish him, and that is the only reason why you're here today to try to make sure that I remain a player in your little game. All right, all right. I'll tell you the truth. The truth? You scare me when you talk like that. That's when I don't trust you at all, when you start getting sincere. <laughs> Derek, look, all right, I'll admit, I didn't just come here to see you, although I really did want to see you, but... But? Uh, well, I came here to ask you a question. Tell me, do you know what this is? Yes. This is a key. I know, I know, but I mean, what's it used for? How should I know? I'm a cop. I'm not a locksmith. I know that cops deal with keys and locks and stuff like that, so... This is obviously not a house key. It's a machine key. It probably opens up some kind of container. Oh, look, it's got a little number right there. 5012. That's 
That's right. You think maybe it opens a safe? I doubt it opens a safe. Maybe a safety deposit box. That's what I thought. Um, you think maybe this number is the number on the box? I don't think the bank is going to put the number of the box right on the key. It's an identifying number. All right, but this is a bank key, right? Where'd you get that key from? And people put very important things in safety deposit boxes, right? Like the most personal possessions. Raven, I asked you where you got that key from. Did that come from the Whitney house the other night? Well, not really. Raven, I'm a cop. Now, did you rob that key? No, the only robber in that house is Skylar Whitney. Oh, I'm sick of hearing you say that. Now, listen. Are you hiding something that once was in the possession of your imposter no, husband? No, no. I did not steal this key. It was given to me. Junior, you're softening clothes in the wrong machine. Genius, liquids go in the washer. You should use bounce in the dryer. But sis, my clothes are soft. Feel. Soft, but this gets out static cling. Uh-huh. Bounce does it better, and clothes smell fresh longer. Wish mine smelled like that. And no liquid or sheet has that terrific scent. Guess I've been using the wrong machine. And the wrong softener. <laughs> Genius. Bounce, the right softener for the right machine. What one family can do to a bathroom, and it's not just the dirt, it's those bathroom germs. So I don't just clean, I cometize. See, Comet disinfects as it cleans, so it wipes away the dirt and the germs. That's cometized. Comet even kills up to 99% of toilet bowl germs. That's cometized. Comet with Chlorinol, so effective, nothing cleans and disinfects bathrooms better. So don't just clean your bathroom. Cometize. Nope, nope, nope. When you discover the cleaner feeling of zest, you gotta say no to yourself. It's not just zest, deodorant lather. Zest rinse is cleaner, too. Look, soap here, zest here. Soap feels tacky, but zest rinse is cleaner. You feel cleaner. Discover the cleaner feeling of zest. You, you gotta, gotta say no to yourself. And yes to zest. Pietro? Pietro? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was just trying to see if it was you. It's me. I just have to see if my heart is still beating. I was so scared when you called me at the restaurant before because I was talking to Gavin and we were, we were talking about you and I just, well, I figured he might suspect where I was going. Well, you don't have to worry about nerve-wracking phone calls from me anymore. I'm going home. Jody, this is the last time I'll be seeing you. Pietro, you can't do that. It's just too dangerous. First of all, you're going to be wanted in that country. They'll arrest you the minute you get there. I'll try to get into my own country without them knowing it. It's been attempted, you know. This is stupid. I have to find out what's happened to my father and my two brothers, Jody. But I told you, I talked to Chad. He promised to find out what he could. He won't keep his promise. Why should he? For all his sweet talk, he's the son of the man who sold out his country. He only says those things because he likes you, Jody. Please, Pietro, just give me a little more time. I'm sorry, Jody. I have put the machine into motion. And I'm going to be out of here after dark. Well, then that gives me a couple of hours, doesn't it? Now, I don't have much time, Jody. Please, remember what I told you about my country's tricentennial. You know how important it would be if you should show up at the celebration. If you call yourself the descendant of Marie Bonaventure, the people will follow you. You can free our country, Jody. Look, I'll do my best, Pietro, but, but that's all I can promise. But right now, I've got to get out of here. Jody! Uh, well, what do you think? You see much improvement in the place? Well, to be honest with you, no. Well, you can't see all the work, but it should be finished in about a week. You're kidding, that's great. Yeah, that should impress your friend Skylar Whitney. Thought it was going to take a year. Oh, well, he just thought it would take a little bit longer than this. Yeah, just long enough for the deal to be up. Oh, now, Jim, I think you're being hard on Sky. I mean, he did make all this possible. No, Buffy Revere made all this possible with her financial help. Well, you had to have a theater before you could have an angel. Yeah, that's true. I guess I just figured that this guy, Sky Whitney, always has an ulterior motive. Well, you're being unfair. You certainly don't know him well enough to make a judgment like that. Yeah, it's true. You do know him better than I do. Anybody home? 
Oh, hello, Buffy. Hello, darling. How are you? Exhausted. To me, a day of shopping is like two weeks in a gymnasium. <laughs> hello, my dear. I'm terribly sorry, but I've forgotten your name. Oh. Valerie Bryson. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Hello. Well, is there a chair someplace? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Well, anyway, I, uh... I think I got the right size, but of course I can't be absolutely sure until you try it on yourself. Try what on? Oh, darling, don't you remember? The other day I said that you seem to be in desperate need of some new clothes. Your wardrobe, to put it mildly, is poverty-struck, if you'll forgive my saying so. So you were out clothes shopping for Jim? Yes. Come on. Try it on best they have. I always think it's a nice, elegant jacket is the most valuable piece of clothing that a man can have. Buffy, I never told you to go oh, get Oh, now me stop in your... arguing and try it on. We're business associates, my dear. I can't have my business associates hanging out at the elbow, dressing like stevedores at a dog fight, or wherever stevedores go. Come on, Jim, try it on. Let's see how it looks. You guys. It's not. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Oh, it's smashing. Simply smashing. Don't you think so? Uh, Valerie. Yes. Well, do I look like a millionaire? Yes. Yes, you certainly do. Well... I guess I'd better be going. I'm sure you and your business associate have a lot to talk about. It's nice to see you again. Bye-bye. Oh, that won't need any alteration whatsoever, but if you think it does, Felix is wonderful with a needle. Felix? Yes, Felix. Said you got leave yet? Ah, uh, yeah, honey, left about a half hour ago. Oh, but there's someone else you know here, right over there. He came in for a drink. He was in earlier to have lunch with your brother-in-law. Excuse me. Jody, hi. Sit down. I suppose you had a nice chat with Miles about how peculiarly I've been behaving lately. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jody. I don't have a minute. I need to know something now, Chad. And it's not about me. It's about Ellis Campbell. Your friend, Pietro. Right. Remember what I asked you to find out about Pietro's family? Yeah, and I did get an answer. I just don't know how to tell you. Well, how about you just come right out and tell me? The Campbells were arrested for sedition. They were charged with plotting an assassination. What? Yeah, the evidence against them was strong, and they must have known it because they attempted an escape, and it failed. You mean that they were recaptured? I mean, they were killed. All three of them. Oh, my God. Jody. Don't. Don't. Just leave me alone. Well, looks to me like you didn't do any better than Gavin did. All the breakfast cereals on the market today. Over a hundred of them all together. Only a very few are high nutrition cereals. Buckwheats is one of them. And among the high nutrition cereals, only Buckwheats has a great touch of honey taste. Mmm, nice touch. So, for high nutrition and great taste, try Buckwheats, the only high nutrition cereal with a touch of honey taste. Sure, all you want. Tell us, Annie, what's it going to be like when we get adopted? It's the best of everything. Lots of love, lots of kisses, and lots of minute made orange juice. <laughs> There's nothing like the delicious, fresh squeezed taste of minute made 100% pure orange juice from Concentrate. Make sure, make it minute made. And it's going to happen for you, just like it happened for me. General Hospital. My son is not going so far away that I will not know him. Your son 
is not going to be so near that I get to know him. Jettable Hospital. That's right, he had the gall to actually invite me to check the alibi of everybody on his payroll. And you know, I bet if I had, they'd have checked out just fine. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure he hired an outside gun. Chief, I am convinced that he is connected with this attempt on Tyler's life. I mean, he's the one man in the world who'd love to see him on that memorial list we've got downstairs. Well, maybe he'll give up now after this failed attempt. Maybe he knows that we'll be watching him. Yeah, maybe. Boy, I... Look, I guess I should apologize for jumping all over Loomis earlier, Look, but that... no apology necessary. I'm not all that thrilled with a new addition here, either. Yeah, well, me neither. But I guess he is a new man, and sometimes new cops, they just try a little bit too hard. So let's give him another chance. writing you a farewell letter. Don't. Tear it up, Pietro. There's no reason. There's no reason for you to go home. Oh, yes, there is. My family, Jody. My mother's all right, but I have to find out about my father. But... I have something to tell you. What do you mean? I, um... I talked to Chad, and he did find out something. What? See, he didn't want to tell me for the same reason that I don't want to tell you now. But, um... Do because I don't want you to. I don't want you to risk your life for nothing. Jody, something's happened to them, right? My brother, my, my father, he's, they've disappeared, right? Just like so many. Tell me the truth. Let it go, Pietro. I said, let her go. When my mom came from Kansas to see her new grandchild, we were so proud. But that night. Lynn, with all the travel, I'm sort of constipated. And I forgot to pack our family friend. <laughs> Ta-da! X-Lax. I knew you'd had it. Families that grew up with X-Lax, chocolate and pills, like to stay with it. It works so gently, overnight. In this house, it's always X-Lax. Same as at home. Gentle X-Lax, chocolate or pills. Make it your family friend. If you were a dog, <coughs> what dry dog food would you want to eat? One flavor, two flavors, three flavors, or the most variety you can get. Four flavor, come and get it. The only dry dog food with the flavors of beef, cheese, liver, and chicken in one bag. Come and get it, Riley. You wouldn't settle for less than four flavors. Why should he? Come and get it. Because if you were a dog, wouldn't you want four flavor variety too? <laughs> This is Joan London. Next week, our unemployment series continues. Also meet Charlton Heston, Lee Volman, Sylvester Stallone, and Carol King on Good Morning America. Tonight, the governor suspects he's being frozen by the party when he's offered a political post in Iceland on Benson. Followed by preseason NFL football action. The AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals face the Green Bay Packers tonight on ABC.